Welcome to the HDI Local Chapters live stream show. Um, and now that I've got everything figured out and working, we can actually talk about uh, what we kind of a little bit alluded to on the pre-show is this is our last live stream show. Um, our show has been graciously sponsored for the past two plus years. I think we're on year three by Robert Half. And tonight, our, it just does, it fits it that our last guest tonight will be from Robert Half talking about one of the re reports they just came out with. So without further ado, let me flip flip to the screen. This is Jessica, Jessica Green from Robert Half, um, one of our uh, latest and greatest uh, Robert Half guests on our show. Welcome to the show, Jessica. Thank you, happy to be here. Awesome, so uh, in true fashion for the the live stream show, I've, I've prepped just that this is like a very rapid show, so to speak, it's a quick 15, but with Robert Half, you know, I'm sure you're not gonna disappoint like your predecessors, even <laughs> the last one who didn't think he was uh, that much into talking went more than 15 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started and just let's talk about you a little bit. Who are you and what do you do for Robert Half? Uh, good question. So I've been with Robert Half 13 years. It's a long time. Oh, um, yeah. Minneapolis market, yeah. Um, always in the um, contract staffing practice for technology. So working with a lot of tech, tech managers in Minnesota. Um, and I'm also on the HDI board for Minnesota. Have been since 2011. Shout out to my Minnesota chapter and board uh, fellow board members. Love our crew. We're doing a fun um, picnic next week. So if you're in Minnesota, come on over. Um, but yeah, love, love Robert Half, love HDI. Um, I also love just community involvement, networking, um, do a lot of the, um, you know, volunteering groups and community involvement committees at Robert Half to get out there and meet people and help the community too. So that's what I'm about. Nice. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because, uh, you know, we, we love having people on that understand uh, the HDI local chapters community and culture. And you gave a shout out to there's a lot of wonderful people on your mm -hmm. in your chapter on your board. And I miss them. I have uh, actually been away from <laughs> the local chapters for almost a year now. I was uh, with the Pittsburgh chapter for the longest time and I, 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 I dearly miss them. But job keeps me pretty busy and pretty hopping. Right. So uh, let's talk about a little bit about um what we're going to, you know, the topic tonight is, you know, understand that uh, Robert Half, as usual, does a lot of wonderful, wonderful research. And that you just came out with, uh, I guess, the topic where there's an ebook about this reports about multi generational workforce. So, first off, now I got to tell you, like, I remember when I started, I was looking at this, I was reading the notes and reading the, you know, parts of the, the book and, you know, the report and things. And I thought, you know, when I first started out in the workforce, it was the old guys and us young punks, right? Us yep. young whippersnappers. Didn't yep. think much about that. But Jessica, this has been a topic for what, like, at least, I feel like five years or, years, yeah. yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk about like, who's in the workforce? What do you mean by multi-generational workforce? Yeah, it's a buzzword, so you don't really read into it, but then when you dig into it, it's actually kind of nuts because there's traditionalists, which were born in 1928, between 1928 and 1945, which is bananas, and they're, they're working past their you know traditional retirement age. Then we have boomers, which we are well aware of. They were born in you know, 1946, 1964, Gen Xers, millennials, and now Gen Z which were born between the years of 1997 and 2005. So the span is from 1928 crazy. to 2005. Like, wow. I, I think of how much like life has been lived and different experiences and history and politics, you know, everything. Yeah. That's a lot. <clears throat> Yeah, and when you say workforce, that's that's everywhere, right? I know when I go to like my local, you know, we won't mention some of the, the retail places, right, where you buy yeah. buy things, and I see people that are. Um, I'm not sure why Terry was trying to call me, but um, Terry's trying to call me. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, we're at the local retail shops and uh, the stores, and I see people that are well into that. What did you call them? The traditionalists. Uh -huh. Right, like the, well into the traditionalist, and, uh, and and I'm like, oh. why would you be still working? But then my my wife reminds me that that um, that'll be me because I can't sit still, mm -hmm. and sure. that's that that I get that you know. So I'm sure that there, 
uh, are many reasons why people are working of all generations. You know, but why? why so why? Why did Robert have choose to? Why is this important for you to do research and report on that? It's a good question, and it's, and it's actually it's such an important topic be, because we are you know consider ourselves industry experts on staffing, and we're working with clients. We're trying to help get jobs filled, get projects filled, and it's hard. Just hiring a candidate, period. That's good. Training them and retaining them is hard. 90% of hiring managers say that they face challenges when they're hiring. Just point blank period. Then you add into the mix of five different generations at the same time, all wanting different things, all caring about different things in different places in their life, with different priorities. It's really important to understand those generations, the differences and what motivates them in order to hire them, attract them, and retain them long term, and, and make the culture of your team cohesive. So it's actually really important. Yeah, I, and I'm, I took I was taking notes on this because this is going to think we're going to something will pick up in the pod, and uh, yeah. because I, I wrote some things down because I personally am going through this. This is why it's yeah. been I've been kind of hit or miss trying to get your episode going because I have been traveling to do. Uh, interviewing and, and and a matter of fact I'm traveling next week to onboard somebody maybe we can talk about that in the pod like like challenges that I've been facing not just with the generational thing but the where we are now in, in the world we live in today post covid yeah. you know how it's changed everything so yeah, yeah. so you, you, sure. you know we you, we talked about like like why it's important but so what are the benefits of having a multi-generational you know workforce yeah I think once everybody realizes, you know, you gotta be open-minded, um, but you're going to have a wider range of perspectives um, and you're gonna have different ideas, differing opinions, differing ideas, but it's gonna help you have, um, you know, more choices and more, uh, you know, spark more creativity. But you're also going to, you know, you're individually gonna learn from more people, different people that have more and or different experience than you but it also gives you an opportunity to work on your communication and collaboration skills, stretching yourself to work with someone that's different than you, um, open your mind to listen to other people's opinions, but then you can also create more robust mentorship programs too. So, yeah. you, know, yeah. you know, senior people can mentor younger people, but vice versa, because everybody has, you know, something different to share or some value that other people can learn from. So it really, um, makes your organization more robust if done well yeah and and you know we i want to make sure we get this in because we did mention that this is the last live stream show and we do this you know quick 15 ish minutes and i want to make sure i get this in here because you 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 know robert have did this wonderful research and you i you talked to me earlier about like a multi-general generational ebook um, so what 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 does this cover with this ebook? Like you know, I assume it's made for squirrels like me who you know can't read a whole novel, a War and Peace novel. Yeah. You know, it it's um, it covers a lot, but it's not too long. A lot of stats, um, just really factual information to help people who are hiring, maybe hiring or managing teams. So it's going to be a lot of research, a lot of facts. Um, but what do managers need to understand in order to recruit, motivate, and retain? professionals in every age group at every stage of their career, which is hard to do. Um, but if you have the right information, you know, it, it's going to help you be set up for success for sure. So, um, just, it's, um, it goes, and it goes beyond the stereotypes, right? Like we, we all can like joke about millennials and boomers and like butting heads and all the things that we, that we joke about, but realistically it's what matters to each, to each generation. If you're, if you're targeting a candidate or you're trying to make sure that your team is cohesive, and that you're keeping everyone happy, you really understand what motivates them. So before you can even build that team, you have to know these things in order to hire the right people. So true. And that's some of the things I, I wrote down, like some of the things to chat about when we get to the pod, because I do see some of the challenges. You know, some of the, and, you know, and I think people, and I just is just a broad brush, I think people in, in each of these generations sometimes don't understand where the other generational uh, people are coming from. And it gets, you know, like I, I know... Uh, and we'll like definitely want to dig into that on the in, on the pod. But you know, I know that I've seen things that, and I and I, I hate to, to I hate I don't say I, don't say I hate to I, it's hard for me to even classify because I don't pay attention necessarily to people's ages 
it, to the point of like, what did we, we had different groups of, you know, you had the, the traditionalists, the boomers, Xers, what else did you have? We had the millennials and the Zs, right? And sometimes I've, I, I can't sometimes tell X, the end of the Xers, let alone the, the millennials and the Zs, right? But I do know that there are di different, it, it, we call them stereotypes, and we say, you know, it's, it's not good to stereotype people necessarily, but it isn't, I wouldn't call it stereotypes, but just things that they're accustomed to, things they grew up with that make it a different, like, different than other generations. For example, you know, you talk about the tr traditionalists, and, you know, you take a look at the phone, and, and they, that, that, you wouldn't see them usually carrying a phone around at work, let alone like on it while they're working. You know, I had a, I had somebody on my team that I asked, you know, their remote and asked how, somebody how they were doing. And they said, well, they're always on their phone. I'm like, yeah, but are they getting the job done? Because what you see is mm -hmm. on the phone doesn't mean they're goofing off, you know, uh, seriously, like, can be a tool, you know? right. Yeah. Yep. You know, they're not, they're not playing games or they're not, you know, maybe they are doing that in between what they do. Maybe they can do, you know, some of the, some things at the same time. So, you know, it is very interesting, you know. Um, so, you know, and I'm going, going into that, like, so, so that, that drives me to my next question is like, how, you know, as a manager, how, how can understanding the, the dynamics of the different generations help? Like, you know, you talk about the ebook, like, cause there's a lot, there's a lot in this. I mean, you're talking five generations, like five sets of like we went from like what the industrial revolution to the you know the internet age to now we're talking the customer experience revolution like there's so much in there like how does this how does you know how do my manager help me what do i do yeah well it's it's so helpful for managers once you understand this because if you have a team that's built up of people from all different generations you have to treat each individual based on you know their work style what works for them and really listen listen to them and it's gonna it's gonna allow their experience to be better it's gonna allow your experience to be better but it's also going to create a more cohesive team and allow people to build rapport and engage with with each other more successfully but you know some people might really care about the work-life balance some people really care about investing in technology others might really care about you know, feedback from their manager, whatever it is. And so more than ever, you really have to customize your approach as a manager to each person on your team. Um, like the one size fits all does just doesn't work anymore. Yeah, no. And you're and <laughs> it's funny <laughs> you, know? you say that because like, I, I, you know, I think it's been about it's been at least a year now, unfortunately, but like a year or so ago, you know, I was doing presentations for the HDI conferences. And that was one of my big things is like, you can't treat everybody the same, right? Where you can't take a cookie cutter approach to yeah. your team in general. Even if I had all Gen Xers, it we're still all different. It right. we don't all. It's funny because I, you know, we talked about hearing the stereotypes, and I go, well, I hate to say it, but to, to some people in my age group, I act more like a millennial in some of the stereotypes than I do a Gen Xer. So we're all different, you know. You know, I, I hear, you know, and I'm sure you've heard this, you know, growing up, like, oh, kids these days, or you just don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've said that. I'm a millennial, so I hear it. No, but I mean, just every generation, like the traditional said it about the boomers, the boomers said it about yeah. the Xers, the Xers. It's like you hear that all the time, like, because I, I hear, like, I hear the, the people, like, my parents and, and that age, they're, they're the boomers, and they're like, oh, kids these days, you know, and I'm like, it's the same issues we were talking about 20 years ago. Stop it, right? So your, your point is, like, exactly Well, and it's right. also, so it's also something that managers need to know, too, to figure out how to even hire these people. And, and how what what to sell in the interview what are they what do they need what's important to them so before you can even get to the point of managing them in order to hire recruit you know you need to know what pushes and pulls are going to interest them in the job and or which things are going to dissuade them or turn them off about your company your team etc so save that for the pod because we're going to unpack that a whole lot more because that <laughs> one is i definitely took a note on that one because yeah i have seen uh an interesting change in the way interviews are, are going, the candidates themselves. So yeah. I would definitely yeah. want to unpack that. So we are sitting, uh, uh, we're a little over, not the, not the normal Robert halftime, but the normal like uh, live stream time. But before we go, Jessica, and turn it and turn over to the uh, to the pod, I want to ask you, like, what are some of the findings that you found interesting that Robert Half uncovered during this study? 
I think there was there was two major things. One one thing that stood out to me the most, which is kind of obvious now that I think about it, but really for every single generation, salary was, you know, top top priority. But for Gen Z, it was not. So the up and coming generation that's entering the workforce now that we are going to be hiring more and more and more of are more focused around <clears throat> flexibility in where and when they work and, and the company culture that comes with that. So I think it's easy to for all of us to assume salary is number one and it is for, for most, but Gen Z is coming in hot. So we have to prepare ourselves for how are we going to set our companies up for success with those additional benefits and um, in order to get those those folks as more and more people at, at the top are retiring. So just Interesting. something to so think now about. You're, now you're telling me I'm a hybrid. I'm, a, I'm an Xer that acts like a millennial that has some Z traits because that's always how I've been too. I'm like, salary is not the most important thing. Like yeah. if I, I've yeah. left company. I actually left my last company making more than I make now because of things you just mentioned. And yeah. I was totally yeah. happy about it. I've done that twice in my career. I literally took a 33% pay cut because I hated my job that bad yeah. to move to a different organization. Yeah. Not to where I'm at now, but but I've done it twice in my career. So you're not wrong. It's well, I can see that. That's interesting because the other fact that I was gonna mention that was interesting was of all the generations, 33% of Gen Xers feel like they are underpaid in comparison to their millennial and boomer counterparts. So mm, yeah. I do not know the facts as to why that is. Sure. I could only speculate. So, but, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's interesting. So that's something where if you're a manager that has a big team of Gen Xers who are, you know, still a very huge part of the workforce, that's something you need to evaluate. It could have been when they entered the workforce, the economy could have been different, who knows, but something that you that companies need to look for to retain those employees too so we'll talk about that in the pod i have some ideas on that believe it or not i i i, I we do a lot of d discussion in my household about things like that and the different mm -hmm. generations not because of the workforce but just how things are different you know uh, my mm -hmm. wife watches a lot, a lot of facebook where they're doing all those jokes if you remember this thing you were born in the 80s you yeah. know yeah, that kind of thing but yeah but but we yeah i have a i have a thought about that seriously it's you know not a joke and it, and it could be maybe it's not the reason but there are there definitely you know are some some ideas about why that might be so so before we go to our to close the show out is there anything else you want to, to just for the live stream before we move on and i keep alluding to that we'll do a little bit of a, a teaser when we close out the show to where we're going where live streams going uh, yeah, I was just going to mention that if people want to read the entire um, workforce ebook, it's on the Robert Half website, free to download. Um, there's also a lot of other thought leadership, white papers, resources on our website, and a bunch of blogs. Um, so feel free to check that out as just a free resource. Um, that's it. And I, I have to say, I thought I had the the address underneath it, but but we'll have it. We'll have the RobertHalf.com. Yeah, roberthalf.com, and, and I'm sure we'll have it linked in here somehow, we'll, or we'll talk to Terry to get it in there with Anna, who graced us with her presence earlier on the pre-show. Uh, so, you know, as we're closing out the show, I want to thank everybody for watching. If you're not watching live, hopefully you're watching the restream of this for hdilocalchapters.org. As Jessica mentioned, she's a, not only a member of the HDI Local Chapters, but a board member, which means she volunteers her time to make things like this happen and, and just that wonderful organization. Um, and I guess I could say sadly, but we're not going away. But sadly, this is our last live stream show. Uh, so Jessica, thank you for being a guest. And don't worry, we're not totally going away. <laughs> we're going to start, uh, we're going to transition over to what our my, my buddy who did our intro and ex exits uh, jingles for this, Ben Brennan said, the pod. We're going to move to podcasting where we can have a different format uh, where Jessica doesn't have to feel so rushed to talk about all these things. We'll unpack more. We'll have multiple guests, multiple hosts. We'll kind of do it like in a, a, a panel type format. And it'll be from any topic that's that's hot off the presses or that's, you know, something that, you know, we that just we, the managers or, or or um, professionals or anybody wants to chat about in you know in the technology space uh, and 
hopefully we spark a little bit of debate. We're going to call it, you know, uh, bites and banter. So we're going to have a little bit of banter. So Jessica, I hope if you stick around, we'll, we'll banter a little bit about like the millennials and the Xers and uh, all this stuff and, <laughs> and get into it with uh, like unpack some of the stuff that you talked about and, and dig a little bit more into some of this wonderful information that Robert Half has in their report. So thank you so much. And uh, I hope you have time to stick around to do, join us on the pod so we can record our first. So you'll be our last guest on this show, but you'll be our first guest on the pod. So yeah, hopefully awesome. we'll see you over there. Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for watching our last show, whether you watch it live or, re or restreamed. Um, we'll, we'll catch you over on the pod side.